chapter 14. Jeremiah alike, allied with uh, Jedaliah. So, first four verses, Jeremiah and Jedaliah, the governor, and then he was assigned, he was sent to Jedaliah. Then the third one, the response of the armies, verse 7 to 10. The response of the Jews, 11 to 12. And then a message to Jedaliah, 13 to 16. Verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord after Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, had let him go from Rama. Where is Rama? Rama is uh, okay. some of the places can't find. But okay, never mind. Okay. Rama is about six miles north of where they were. When he had taken him bound in chains among all who were carried away captive from Jerusalem and Judah who were carried away captive to Babylon. So, we can't see from here. Okay, look at this man. So, Jeremiah was in prison. He was released and he was taken to Ramah, which is about six miles north. Now, together with the other Jews who were taken captive into exile, eh? there must be a mistake. Because he was supposed to be released. So by mistake, they have taken him together with the whole group. Now, today we think is, but Nebuchadnezzar up there had already given instruction. But those days they don't have WhatsApp. So message didn't travel so fast. So by the time the message came, they had really rounded up everyone. Right? And start moving them. It was only at Rama. Then they say, ah, hey, this man, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar say, release him. Okay? So, verse 2, And the captain of the guard, Nebuchadnezzar, took Jeremiah and said to him, Now, this Nebuchadnezzar, is he a Jew or Gentile? Gentile. Gentile. Idol worshipper, right? From Babylon, pagan. You see what he says. The Lord your God has pronounced this doom on this place, on Judah. Now the Lord has brought it and has done just as he said. Well, he also knows. <laughs> because he's been spoken for so many years, right? Because you people, see, pointing at others, you people have sinned against the Lord and have not... And, not obeyed his voice. Therefore, this thing has come upon you. Wow. The world is quite good at judging us by God's standard. Right? They know. You are, you know what? You deserve this. You know, you never obey your God. You never this. And they expect Christians to put on the best standard. But if they cheat and they lie, they get drunk and do. But you, you cannot, you cannot. You know, wow, God will punish you. They are judging us. Okay. So this God, I mean, some as if he is the prophet, not scolding his own people. But actually, he's not. He's a pagan. So, question: Should we then conform to the world? We shouldn't. Yeah. The they, they, they are judging us by God's standard, which is good. But, meanwhile, the church uh, wants to harm the people or go wherever it seems convenient for you to go. So the captain of the guard gave him rations and a gift and let him go. So while Jeremiah uh, has yet 
to arrive at Jedaliah's place. Nebuchadnezzar is like rushing the thing, hey, hey, quick go, you know, send you there. And give him rations and give. Then Jeremiah went to Jedaliah, the son of Ahikam, to Mispah. So he went to Mispah, which is north of Jerusalem, because Jerusalem was in ruins. And Jedaliah made his uh, office, his HQ there. And he went to Mispah and dwelt with him among the people who were left in the land. There were some people who remained, so they were all there. And what it tells us is Jeremiah chose to stay in the land which he loved and with the people whom he loved. This is God's gift, the land, to his people. And these are his people. He could have gone to Babylon and enjoy the special privileges, but he chose to be with his people. So you can choose to go to the world. Babylon is a picture of the world, right? You can choose to go into the world or you choose to stay with God's people. He chose God's people. <clears throat> And when all the captains of the armies who were in the field, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Jedaliah the son of Ahikam governor of the land, and had committed to him men and women and men, women and uh, children, and the poorest of the land who had not been carried away captive to Babylon, then they came to Jedaliah at Mispah. And who were they? Ismael, the son of Nathaniah, Johanan, and Jonathan, the sons of Kariah, Siriah, the son of Tahumeth, the sons of Ephi, the Nephtophatite, and Jezaniah, the son of Makatai, they and their men. So if you look at this map, now, there is this sign, uh, this guy uh, is very good. Every, almost every chapter or so, uh, he will draw a map. Yeah. Generation map or something like uh, the website. So he draw freehand. But it's simple enough for us to know. Now, what happened? So, up here in Mispa was Jedaliah. And Jeremiah went there. And Jedaliah had men and women, those who remained in the land, the poor people, they were there with him. Now, meanwhile, during the invasion of the Babylonians, some of the people in Judah, they escaped. They went to the mountain. They, they were probably uh, leaders of their own people and, and they had their small army or something. But they were all in Judah. But when the Babylonians came, they ran to the mountains. They went everywhere to hide. Now that the Babylonians have taken the captives away, and uh, this Jedaliah is here, so they decided to come back. So from Edom, they came back. From Moab, they came back. Ammon, and so on. They came back to Jedaliah. Perhaps... Together, they can reinforce and start a rebellion against uh, Nebuchadnezzar. But now we read first that they came back. So all these people came back to Jedaliah at Mispah. And in verse 9, And Jedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, took an oath before them and their men, saying, Do not be afraid to serve the Chaldeans. Dwell in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. Now, Jedaliah, Jedaliah was actually echoing the words of Jeremiah. That means he make it official. That means he is not 
he is not going to report these people to the boss in Babylon. But take an over there, just say, okay, just stay here <coughs> and serve Babylon, it shall be well with you. Wasn't this exactly what Jeremiah said in the first place before the invasion? Serve the Babylonians, it shall be well with you. So I take an oath. Yeah, I won't report you. So you just serve and you see you have uh, a lot of fruit of the land. It shall be well with you. As for me, verse 10, I will indeed dwell in Mizpah and serve the Chaldeans who come to us. But you, gather wine and summer fruit and all, put them in your vessels and dwell in your cities because these people they were not in Jerusalem, but they were in other cities in Judah. So go back and dwell in your cities that you have taken. Likewise, when all the Jews who were in Moab, in, among the Ammonites, in Edom, and who were in all the countries, heard that the king of Babylon had left a remnant of Judah, and that he has set over them Jedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan. Then all the Jews returned out of all places where they had been driven and came to the land of Judah, to Jedaliah at Mizpah, and gathered wine and summer fruit in abundance. This is what? Blessing. If there is no blessing, there is no wine, there is no summer fruit. Moreover, Johanan, the son of Karia, and all the captains of the forces that were in the fields came to Jedaliah at Mizpah and said to him, Do you certainly know that Baalis, the king of the Ammonites, so the king of the Ammonites, these are enemies of Israel. Yeah. Baalis come from the word Baal, worshipping the idol god. So, do you not know, wait a minute, do you certainly know that Baalis, the king of the Ammonites, has sent Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, to murder you? Among the group of people who return to you, or one of them is a traitor. Jew, Jew, but he's going to kill you. You read just now, in verse 8, the people who came to Jedaliah at Mizpah. What is the first name we see there? Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah. He was hiding in Ammon. And now the king of Ammon sent him to come to Jedaliah and kill this Jedaliah. How Johanna know? I don't know. But he released this word to Jedaliah. Now, Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, the name itself is bad really. You know, Abraham and Sarah first came out was what? Ishmael. Ishmael is a picture of the flesh. Because it was done in their own will, right? They're trying to help God. Oh, so old already. God, you promise, but no baby yet. Come, you go and sleep with me. To Ishmael. It is an act of the flesh. Where else? Where else? This who Isaac huh? is the son of the promise. Okay? So this is of the flesh. So, but Jedaliah, the son of Ahikam, did not believe them. Nice guy. Nah. No, nah. he only thinks well of others. He said, no, nah. just come and dwell, eat the fruit of the land, serve the Chaldeans, he'll be okay with you. So, we also need to exercise wisdom. Don't take warnings lightly. Consider it before you dispose of it. Or maybe you might want to take heed of the warning. 
Then Johanna, the son of Kariya, spoke secretly to Jedaliah in Mizpah. He didn't give up. What did he say? <clears throat> Let me go, please, and I will kill Ismael, the son of Nathaniah, and no one will know it. Why should he murder you so that all the Jews who are gathered to you would be scattered and the remnant in Judah perish? But Jedaliah, he's so naive. The son of Ahikam said to Johanan, the son of Karia, You shall not do this thing, for you speak falsely concerning Ishmael. Okay, so we stop here. This is chapter 14.